What is going on, you guys? It is Chef Boy Knots, and we are back on YouTube with another video. It's been a long time, and this is going to be kind of quick because I just kind of wanted to get this out there. I'm going to do very little editing, but I wanted to upload this for you guys to check out. Um, so, what is this? What's what's going on, Jason? What's the tea? Well, for those of you that know me, you know that I do a lot of Dungeons and Dragons stuff. You can check out the description uh, and go check out my Start Playing Games link and join me for a game of Dungeons and Dragons. But more so than that, I've been working on my next D&D campaign, and it is a monster catching campaign, but it's D&D. D. And then randomly about six months ago, I was like, oh, I want to make a video game. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't even know coding like that, right? But I found out about something called Cursor AI. Now, Cursor AI, it's it's very vibe coding. Like, I don't know how to use coding, but I was able to connect Cursor AI with Godot, an engine, mostly used for 2D, but, you know, you can do other stuff with it as well. And because I had Cursor and Godot connected, I was then able to start hashing away and seeing if I could make a game. Now I have experience with Photoshop and you know I'm a big gamer to that extent so I was able to kind of get some stuff going. I started working on some menus in Photoshop and all of that stuff and over the past six months of a lot of ups and downs and trial and error and mess ups etc I was ultimately able to get a pretty mostly working game. The game itself is a reskin of the game Slay the Spire. It's got some new features and obviously my own mechanics, mechanics and stuff like that, but I did like the roguelike deck card builder game of Slay the Spire, and I figured if I'm gonna make a game, you know, let's do something that I'm familiar with. So here we are. I wanted to just give you guys an update of what this is looking like right now. Now, some of the things aren't going to work and we are really just kind of play test this as it's going. And for all I know, it could crash as we're watching this. It is about $20 a month for Cursor AI, and then I, you know, of course use Photoshop, I do use ChatGPT to help with some image generation, and then all together I use those in combination with something like Suno to basically see how much can AI make a video game with someone like me who just doesn't know what they're really ultimately doing. All right, so we are here. This is currently Cursor AI. It's There's basically a lot going on over here. The bottom is a debug console from a couple different runs with some data that I mostly use to feed into the AI to help me kind of troubleshoot things and help AI figure out what the problem is. Over here on the side, we do have the actual chat GPT Cursor AI panel thing going on. I'm currently using Claude mostly because it seems like Claude's AI seems to work a lot better when it comes to game coding. But over here is just pretty much where I tell it to fix things. There, of course, is uh, actual code in the middle you can go through all of our resource files and pretty much do most of it in Cursor AI, but then I can jump between Godot as needed. But yeah, let's go ahead and check out this game. I'm going to press F5. This will start running a debug of the game and I'm going to full screen it. We got a uh, copy of it. It's loading up right now. Boom, here we go. Let's full screen this. So this is Aegis Academy of Keepers, right? Um, I'm going to turn the background volume down for you guys a little bit. Now, the game itself over here, uh, we got some background music. Once again, it was made using AI, but I can click the options menu here. I can adjust some in-game audio. It's a little slider I've made here if I want to. I can delete some saves just because it's the only place I can really delete them. So I can do that as well. And then I do have an option here where you can see some of the different music files that are in there. If I want to change some of that up, maybe just to see if the songs are working, I can do that there as well. But that is that you can see in the new thing after I've the main menu after I've gotten rid of a file that it says that there's an empty continue slot. So we have to click new game. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now this right here, there's three save slots for this game as of right now. I'm gonna go ahead and just click slot three, right? Now we can enter our name. So I'm just gonna name this one for all intents and purposes, Tester. This is Elias Vason. He's one of our characters. There's four playable characters currently. Uh, remember, this is based off of a D&D campaign. So there's like Fighter, and then if I go to the right over here, you can see there's a wizard character. And then I have two block slots that we can't access yet. But you can see there's some UI pulse going on. You can see that it accurately is showing they're locked. Um, just honestly, a lot of little things that unless you're making a game yourself, you might not be able to appreciate. But considering I've been working on this for six months, just with me and AI, I'm just like, ah, oh, look, it, it, it pulses. It pulses. Little stuff like that. But we're going to play as Elias Vason here. I'm going to go ahead and click start game. Welcome to Aegis Academy of Keepers. Now, this is an AI Nestled voice actor. within the heart of Zytheris, Aegis Academy Which we could stands as the most prestigious institution for those who seek to master the art of monster keeping. Here, students are trained to wield keeper bracers, powerful artifacts that allow them to capture and command creatures. Through rigorous trials and training, students rise through the ranks, forging bonds with beasts and proving their worth. As you begin your journey at Aegis Academy, you will train, capture creatures, and rise through the ranks, 
But along the way, you may discover secrets that challenge everything you've been taught. Elias Vaisson, House of Fang, Fighter. So I have something in the code to where, depending on what character you play as, it'll show the character art on the side. So that'll change if you're Callum or whoever else. And then this little extra bottom text that's here is just some flavor text. Obviously, I've been kind of speeding through a lot of this, so there's some cleanup. Like I can tell on the sprite over here, I need to clean up some of the cutting out I did of some various parts of it. But you know, some of this is just placeholder, and we can get change it when we get there, if we'd like. Now, our actual map generation, uh, I'm so proud of this. I, at the top, I have three potions. Uh, you can't really see it because I'm kind of in the way, but if I hover over them, there is a hover UI. The top will let me go to a menu. There's a score thing here that in theory should update. I'm kind of tweaking the score system right now. Currently on floor one, we have zero gold, 20 HP. It can show you my player name. I'm playing as the tester name. And then Elias Vason is my current character. And then the magic items, just like how Slay the Spire has artifacts, we've got magic items. So this is Luckstone. Every fifth card played during your combat, turn of combat is duplicated. Um, I'm still play testing what items work and what timing issues aren't there. So for all I know, this might not even work. But the generation works. It randomizes stuff. I have specific rules, just like Slay the Spire. So these first ones will always be a combat tutorial against a wolf. You can see at the very end on floor 10, there's a boss battle. And then there's always rests on nine, uh, these little campfire things. It's called a dorm in our game. But yeah, so let's actually go through it. Um, I'm actually going to go through the bottom node here. Finally, some action. A little dialogue thing that I can edit. This is a tutorial dialogue that's there um, just to get something going. I'm gonna turn the background music down a little bit more for us. Now, there's a wolf cry that I have implemented at the beginning, so you know they'll do like a little sound effect when they're summoned. In the chat bar here, it says, no prison-born enemy spawn, because my game does have a, uh, like a shiny Pokemon kind of thing, but they're called prison-borns. So I have 10 cards to start, just like in Slay the Spire, 20 health over here, my armor is zero. Then we use Soul Stone. Soul Stones is our energy for this game. So uh, combat start, it says begin, click deck to begin. So I'm gonna draw my five cards. Now the intent over here for this wolf says that they're going to nip the player for two damage. So I'm gonna use two dodge cards, which will then lower my soul stone, increases my armor. I can see in the chat that I played dodge using a soul stone, I gained an armor. So I got some stuff there showing me that. And then I'm just gonna attack for one. So now he's down at seven. I can see that there's three cards in my discard, two in my hand, five here. And then these cards, just like I say the spire, should go to my discard. Beautiful. Now the um, wolf did deal two damage to Elias. So he uh, got rid of my armor but I can still do more to him. So I'm gonna do shield bush, it'll uh, bash, it'll do two damage, which it does. I gain an armor. I'm gonna actually go ahead and deal an additional three with that. You can hear the sound effects that I've made. I am a music producer, so I'm able to like take sounds and stuff like that and tweak and kind of edit things uh, how I want with that. So I do have some fun little sound design, you know, sound effects that are sprinkled throughout. Um, but I think it really just, yeah, that sounds like an error to me. Uh, I'm gonna end my turn, of course. He's gonna do four damage draw again and he's only got two hp boom now this is our victory screen uh we're still putting on some work the image will of course change i say we me and should, <laughs> me and ai uh but you can see the floor cleared here is going to change depending on the character i can see a breakdown of gold earned score gained how that works over here i have a click to expand thing that's kind of finicky but in theory it tells you how to gain more gold and score this is mostly a placeholder until i figure out a better way to do this and run it um it is a monster catching game, so you can choose to either capture a creature card, like the creature you fought, in this case would have been a wolf, or I can get some other cards. For the sake of demonstrating, I will get a creature card. It's gonna register what cards are creatures that I fought, which in this case would be a wolf. So I'm gonna get that companion and we're gonna add it to my deck. And then we're back to the map screen. The node you see has now moved me to floor two. I have 87 score, great, that worked. Um, that's a new fix, so you're seeing that live working with me for the first time. And then I can see down over here that uh, floor two is up updated and the next one would be an event node. So let's go check that out. So this is the Fae Trickster. Uh, a tiny Fae offers you a deal, a small price for a grand boon. It does say 30 gold is gonna cost for this, but I don't have enough gold to do that. I only have 22 and the code does register that, which is awesome. We love to see that. Um, but it says I can offer a card. I'm gonna call their bluff. And then it just says, you call the phase bluff. It drops 50 gold and flees, but curses you. All enemies in your next fight will have extra armor. I'll believe it when I see it. A lot of these events and timing and stuff is stuff thing I'm still working on. So if they have extra ridiculous armor, then this will work. If not, then they didn't. But it does say it drops 50 gold. So let's see if I gain gold. Do I gain any gold? Boom, 72 gold. We love to see it. I'm gonna move on to the next combat node here. 
It doesn't look like it gained any extra armor because this guy only has one armor and it probably would have had more if anything. Um, I can then activate my companion slot now with my companion creature card. I'm gonna press, press that. You can see that the creature is now flashing, which means I can select it for an attack. So I'm gonna select them. I'm gonna click uh, bite to deal a damage, get rid of that armor. He's gonna nip me for two, so I'm just gonna dodge so that he doesn't do any damage. In my turn, he's gonna hit the player. You can see the intent does say if it's the player or the companion that they're attacking. My companion will also attack. And yeah, I'll just, I'll just try to deal some damage. Try and kill this guy as fast as we can. Boom, boom, boom. Awesome. I'm also going to just choose a card this time. Now the way this works is two of the three cards currently are gonna always be cards from the set of your character. So like Elias has a whole set of cards for himself. And then the last card will always be a random card from a random, any card in the database. Um, so that card is actually a Callum card. Um, I really do like Taunt here. It says gain three damage and apply weaken, but uh, Shield Slam says deal damage equal to your armor. It's both pretty good. I'm gonna get Taunt, because I like gaining the armor for now. And then now that I'm moving on, I have two options because the node progressed. So do I want to go up or do I want to go down? I'm actually going to go down. Let's try the rest screen. A beautiful sound effect when I hover. It has a light little glow when I hover the mouse over it. Um, and this is basically the dorm. The rest in this game is your dorms. So I can do personal training, which will help increase my health. Forge, which will upgrade cards. And long rest, which will fully heal me. Um, I actually, in this case, I think I want to upgrade a card. So we're going to click Forge. I can look at my cards and see what I want to upgrade. I'm going to upgrade my Taunt card. It says it gains three armor. Now, in theory, this upgraded card should now do four armor. I'm going to click my menu and look and see what my deck says. Ah, uh, see, it says Taunt Plus, but it only says gain three armor. Uh, it looks like the rarity correctly upgraded, but it doesn't look like this card correctly updated the text. So this card might not work properly um, as far as the effect goes. And that's exactly why we're beta testing. Um, so let's go to this. This is going to be an elite fight, which means they have a minion. You have two slots on the enemy side. So now I've got a lot of uh, stuff to worry about here. Um, I'm going to get a wolf out to just start targeting down whatever I can. I'm going to gain three armor. Now, if you look in the combat log, it says choose a target for your card. Click one or two. So I got to pick an enemy uh, or I can just click them. I am going to click this wool, uh, bat here. So the bat is now weakened. So its attack will do less damage. I'll end my turn. All right, not too bad. We're doing a little bit better, but we still, I'm trying to just get down the first guy I can. Um, boom, boom, boom. So he's dead. Um, I'm gonna end my turn. It does look like the enemy still got a couple of hits in, but we can weaken him, gain some armor. Hopefully build our dodge up a little bit. He's slashing the companion that time it's rather than me. So I got to actually avoid an attack for once. Uh, and then I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna keep swinging. Thankfully the companion is taking some attacks. We love that. Um, I'm gonna just see, okay, the companion's gone, but now he's coming for me, but boom, I got another companion out because we got a creature card. I haven't decided. Uh, the wolf right now gets recycled back into your discard. All the other creatures do go to the banished pile. The wolf is the only one that doesn't, and I don't know if that's gonna be a feature. I don't know if I wanna change where those cards are sent. I'm still kind of figuring out, um, you know, balance of the game. But another guy's dead. We're gonna get an ice bolt, because this ice bolt has freeze. It's one of the most broken things in the game as of right now, because it makes the enemy completely skip a turn. All right, I got another rest here. Oh, let's just long rest. Fully restore our HP. Moving to another combat here, but at least we have more HP this time. Uh, this is not even too hard. It's actually just one little guy. So that's gonna be great. Yeah, he'll be out of here in no time. We'll freeze him so he can't do anything. Freeze makes him not be able to do anything, which is amazing. I'm gonna grab the goblin card just to have it. Another creature. But so far, like, I mean, we can look at our deck and all the data is saving, it's updating. I can see the cards are being added. The score is being updated. This is all really good. My HP is being preserved. So is my gold. I'm gonna rest over here. I'm gonna check this out. I'm gonna long rest. I know I'm only missing two HP, but I have a feature I wanna show you. So I'm gonna long rest to get back to max HP. And then if you see, I only have three potion slots normally, but I can go to the long rest and I can do personal training. 
Now, normally personal training just increases your HP by one, but I have a feature. If you have max HP, it increases it by two and you unlock a special potion slot. Proved exceptional training. Your max HP increases by two, you find a potion slot. Now I will have four potion slots as well as a free potion. Uh, you can't really see it because I am in the way, but bloop, there you go, moving down a little bit. See there's now a potion up here, it is a venom vial. It'll apply poison to the enemies. All right, we are on the final boss fight. We can see Callum here. He's one of the uh, other characters you can play as, and he has appeared now as the boss for this fight. Uh, so we're gonna fight him. He's got a bear creature thing going on. We're summon our little wolf. I'm gonna apply this venom vial. Uh, it applies it to both of them, which is amazing. Uh, I don't know if that's a feature that I wanna keep or what. Uh, Callum is beefing himself up though, but I can freeze him and we're just going to start ticking away I I'm gonna start ticking away at this iron bear over here Because that needs to go I'm gonna taunt Iron bear is slowly getting weakened. I've still got some HP, so I'm not really crazy worried right now Boom, he's dead out of the water and yeah, I mean, honestly, that freeze really helps a lot because it stops him from doing stuff. The arm, the poison potion we got also uh, has been reducing his damage. So that's just great. Like we kind of have a good setup going on here. I mean, he's about to die. He's gonna arcane blast me for five. I'm gonna freeze him again. Yeah, he's he's gone. So yeah, we can see the banish pile here now. The goblin's there. So we use the goblin card. Freeze him again. Yeah, that Ice Bolt card. I need, to, I need to increase the rarity of that card. That is a crazy card, but I should win now. And I can actually capture his creature, which is this Iron Fur Bear, which is amazing. And then that is the end of the demo. I'll click OK. Final score, 590. And that's it, everybody. That's Aegis Academy of Keepers, um, at least as far as it is today. I want to thank you guys for checking this out. And leave me some comments below if you've ever tried to make a game or anything like that. Uh, it is a one-man team, me and AI, and then, you know, my roommate is helping me work on some stuff. So it's definitely a mission, but we're making it happen, and it's a fun little passion project. But, um, yeah, that's her so far. If you like this video, once again, give it a like, and let me know what you think below. And until next time, Knots out.